Welcome back to the Keep Going Podcast with Vin Kennedy. I'm your host, Vin Kennedy. As you can tell, we have a special guest today. This is Bianca. Bianca, if you want to do a quick little intro. Hey guys, my name is Bianca Grande and I'm the founder of Elevate Your Power. I'm uh, truly obsessed with helping women tap in their potential and step into their power. I like to make an impact on people's souls and um, spreading the love as much as possible. <laughs> awesome. No, so obviously we align in that. Um, I think we came across each other on Instagram very mutual uh, wavelength and uh, common goal. Yeah, absolutely. I kept seeing you pop up and I was yeah. like reading your pie. I've seen the podcast enough. I was like, that is my people. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's, it's funny. It's, you know, I have some people that are like, oh, you, you post too much. And I'm like, I don't think I post enough, you know? <laughs> There's never too much of any kind of content, especially the kind of content that you put out. Yeah, no. It's, know, that's, that's what you really want. And I think more people need to hear it and see it. I agree. And I, I love what you got going on as well. And if you want to just dive right into the uh, elevate your power. Yeah. So, okay. So here's the story and you're going to see, like, I light up like a Christmas tree when I talk about it because it's my little baby that I'm growing, but um, elevate your power started in 2019. So it was really a group that we would meet. It's just for women for right now. A lot of men, you ask me, why can't we have any men? I always say start a men's group, <laughs> but, yeah. but we'll see what happens in the future. Um, but we started meeting once a month in person and here's a quick background of it. I used to run a networking company. So my full-time job was to connect the dots between entrepreneurs. I used to host events. Um, and within me networking where I was at that time, I was a gym owner. Um, I really just saw the piece of the mindset part, not in networking events. So I would go and I would exchange cards and I would talk to people and I'm like, but you know, I want more. Like I want to find a way to connect with people. Also too, not everybody is easy connecting with people or just speaking with people. So if you give a discussion or something to talk about, people might be more likely to open up. That was my idea of it. So I said, you know what? I'm going to start my own group. So then COVID hit. And at this time I was in a mastermind group um, working with Bob Proctor and one of his number one um, guys on his team and stuff. So I really dove deep into like the, the mindset change and the transformation of that. And it was working so good for me. We would get on a mastermind call once a week, COVID hits, no more meeting in person. I did have the idea of going on zoom. Cause I thought that would be a great way to connect with people from all over. So it was kind of weird how that all happened. Right. I was kind of forced to just go on zoom. Right. Yeah. Um, and then it turned into, we meet every Monday night, six 45 Eastern time. Uh, you don't have to be an entrepreneur, but of course you can be, but the topics that we, that we talk about are anywhere from like how to cultivate more self-love, how to build your confidence, how to build your business. Here's the deal. If you don't know who you are and you're aware of yourself and your actions, right? You don't have true self-love for you. If you can't attract you, how are you going to attract anyone to help build your business? If you're in network marketing, who, who is really going to want to work for you, with you, if you're not working for yourself, with yourself, yeah, working sure. on yourself, right? So if you know who you are, you want to build relationships, you want to have a connection, you've got to have that solid connection with yourself. So it's not just a networking group. You'll go around, you'll say who you are, what, what you do, that's great. But it really is more of a mastermind group. It's more of a, I want to make you uncomfortable. You might want to bring a box of tissues. You're probably going to shed a tear because I do. Right. No, <laughs> I want to break you down a little bit so that you understand the importance of, of building yourself up. And when you have that self-love, you have that self-confidence, whether you're in sales, whatever it is that you do, network marketing, you're, it, it doesn't matter. You will be able to attract exactly what it is that you're looking for that's awesome and and like you said like the other men say like i'm sitting here listening to that i'm like when's the men group start yeah right? I, know, I know we'll see maybe in 2023 we'll see <laughs> okay. awesome but okay so and one thing i now i'm an advocate for the mastermind groups i know all about it i know what the self-work could do for you personally now mm -hmm. a question i i'm sure you get is well what's the roi and i'm sure a lot of people are like because I have buddies that have joined the, I know Ed Milet, um, Andy Frasilla, they have yeah. programs as well, where again, I think it's a little different because you're one-on-one -on -one with these people where they're probably getting, you know, their third guy, fourth guy, whatever it is. Again, still adds value, but it's, yeah. So what would you, what would kind of be your answer to like what they're going to get out of it? Yeah, no, these are great questions. Um, so here's the deal. It's a smaller group and it's continuing to grow, right? I'm a big believer on your vibration and your frequency. So 
if your vibe is not high and you're not vibing on a high frequency, you're not going to attract the things that you want. So coming on Elevate, I could promise you this, your vibe is going to, to, to rise up, right? I'm going to change the way that you think. Anyone could sit there and tell you the things to do, and that's great. But if you don't get in your head, you don't start changing the way that you think, you're not going to do the things that you need to do the right way, right? So on these calls, your vibe is going to change. You're, you're, you're going to find out more about yourself. You're going to be able to ask the questions. You're going to be able to connect with people from all over the country. I have members from Minnesota. I have members from South Carolina. We're all the way up in Canada. It's great. So if you're working online or anything, those connections are, are there. And that's up to you to schedule the one-on-one -on -one calls. But the ROI is like changing the way that you feel, right? right? Your, your feelings, your emotions. As humans, we cannot stop emotions from coming, but you can choose the way that you feel. And what Elevate will do is help you to make that choice. You might feel sad. You might feel like shit one day. You might not want to go reach out and go cold call or go, you know, stop into that place that you know that maybe you can help them, but you don't feel like it, Right elevate is going to help you to elevate to that next level to where you can overcome those emotions and choose a better feeling to have. And then you're able to attract exactly what it is that you want. It's a lot of a law of attraction. I'm a big believer in that you are an, you are an attraction. You've got to get your frequency high enough to, 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 to be there. Right. Tony Robbins talks about this all the time, changing your state, changing your state. I say this always, it's not that Tony is not afraid of things. I'm sure he's human. He has emotions. He's afraid. He's like, Oh God, what am I going to do? He just gotten so good at changing his state and right. and raising up, right. The vibe, the frequency that he attracts, whatever it is that he wants, but it's a habit. So, so elevate. yeah. So you're going to, you're going to elevate the way that you think, the way that you feel, you're going to change a state of mind. And I'm going to teach you the habits the habits that you need to implement every single day. It's consistency. It's constant repetition. Now that's the reason why Elevate is every Monday night. It's not once a month. It's not every eight weeks we get together. That's not what it is. I'm here to change the way that you think. And by the next Monday that comes around, by the weekend, you're probably feeling like, all oh, right, kind of, go. eh, what's going on? Oh, and I'm going to a party. Oh, I drank all the weekend. Okay, great. And then by Monday, you fill your cup. You have, you have to fill your own cup. So that's the... ROI on it. Those are the things that you're going to get. It is very personal. You have me one-on-one. -on -one. You can reach out to me whenever, whenever you want to. Um, it's just a great, great group. Yeah, no, that's, that's all. And you can tell the passion and it's, it's funny because you say that. So Ed Milet talks about like, you have your own personal thermostat. So you can only rise to the level of your thermostat. If you have the idea of like a limiting belief on yourself of, I can't obtain whatever amount of money, or I can't attract whatever person you can't. So it's true. You have to raise your own level and, and people, again, this is a topic for another day, but I feel like people look for that in partners or in friends to kind of just, Hey, I need you here for me. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and no, it's absolutely. And it's all about the, it's all about the belief. I just said this on the call last night, we have to wake up every morning and resell ourselves on our goal every single day. Every day. You have to wake up and sell yourself every day on what you're doing, on, on your dream, on your why, all of that stuff. But you have to be consistent with it, right? You can't just wake okay. up one day and you're like, okay, I'm going to do my morning routine. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. And then by the end of the week, you're like, ah, I, uh, it, it, it doesn't work. Right. It, it doesn't work because you're not, you're not, you're not working it. So you're never going to promise that. Yeah. You're never, you're never going to go to the next level. There's yeah. so many people that I've helped coach lose, like lose weight, lose weight, but they didn't lose it here. That's what elevates you help you do. You got to change, right? Then it comes right back because you didn't change the thermostat. You Absolutely. have to, uh, elevate is going to help you to change your identity as a person. You've got to step into that person. I talked about my person yesterday on my story, right? Right. Me, I, I have to step into someone else and elevate is going to help you to do that, to figure out like where, where you are right now, accepting it and where it is that you want to be. It's, it's so true. And so I, I honestly, I, for myself, like a, a question to piggyback right off of that. A lot of what I, I do on this podcast is just, I ask the questions that I need the answers to, which I'm hoping in turn helps other people oh. um, right there. So how do you deal with, and I just did an episode on this, but it hits right on the head. Like, how do you deal with that? So while you're making that shift, obviously you aren't that person yet. How do you deal with that where it's like imposter syndrome type situation? Yeah. Yeah. So um, the first thing I'm going to say that just comes to my mind is that you just have to keep going. It's funny. Your podcast is keep going. Yeah. Podcasts, right. When I first started to train classes, like my fitness, my hashtag was keep going. I, I used that. to have a whiteboard. I used to have a whiteboard with a quote every single day. And I would put the quote on there. And then at the bottom, it was keep going. You have to fight the fear. The fear is going to be there. 
right? The fear is going to be there. But again, it's up to you how you feel about that fear. Accept it. Accept it and keep on going. Accept it and keep on moving on. The person who I emulate, I become obsessed with them. Now, this is going to be a little but just roll with me for like a second here, right? Because we all want to be ourselves, right? We're all going to show up in, in our authentic way. But in order to change your identity, you want to latch on to someone who you emulate, who you like, who, who you're like, wow, I want to be like that person. And that's okay, because you're going to put your own spin on it anyway. You know what I mean? So you want to listen to that person. Like if it's Ed Milet, like listen to Ed Milet every single day. What does that person do? What are their habits? What are their day to day? What does their day look like? And start to make your day look like that, right? So it's not a matter of being an, an imposter. That's your perception of it. To me, when I'm doing it, it's it, I'm, I'm, I'm having a training day. I'm training with Ed Milet. I'm training with Lori Harder. I'm training with Elisa Nichols. What does her day look like? Because I want to be that person. So it's only your perspective, right? Keep building your confidence up. Like you've got to be able to fight the fear. Bob Proctor talks about this. It's the terrier barrier. That barrier comes up and you have a decision to make. You're either going to stay here and, and let the fear take over you, or you're going to run through that wall and don't let that fear stop you. Accept the fact that the fear is going to be there. Too bad. You're going to be scared. Too bad. You got to want it more. You got to be hungry for it. Here's another thing. You've got to be so emotionally attached to your why because your why is what heals you. You get that, right? Yeah. What heals you? So I'm emotionally attached to my why. I got, I got the goosebumps all over my, all over I'm, my legs I'm right now. Just off that I lifted this morning and not after this. <laughs> right? Seriously, yeah. <laughs> You got to be emotionally attached to it. My honestly, my why is making an impact on people. Yeah. I'm a very empathic person and I feel like I connect with people very well, right? Like very instantly. I've had that habit, like that, that instinct, right? But I want to make an impact on people. I feel like that's, a, that's a gift. So Absolutely. that's, that's what I want to tell people is like, the, listen, accept it. The fear is going to be there. You have to be more emotionally attached to your why to, to, to do so. And then you will not feel like an imposter. Sure. And you know what it is too, and a lot of it, and it all goes back to it, physical, mental, all of it goes back to delayed gratification. And yeah. like we said before we hopped on the episode, our phones ruin us because we get everything so instant. So when you need to put in the hard work and the monotonous, like in and out daily grind, mm -hmm. it terrifies people. You know, I, I yeah. just finished a big marathon prep. And if you would have told me I had to run 586 miles, I would have looked at that and been like, shit, like that's a lot of miles. And I haven't been running. I was, I did a bodybuilding show prior. So it's, you're sitting here, if you look at it as a big task, but if you look at it as daily, you know, you're running three miles today, four miles tomorrow, you could break it down. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just, again, it all goes back to perspective and delayed gratification and consistency. Completely yes. agree. Yes. And um, yes. And the consistency. And here's the thing too. I listen a lot to um, Abraham Hicks. I don't know if you okay. no. know who they are. And it's a, I believe it's a balance of setting the goal, but becoming detached from the outcome. That makes sense. Right. Because what happens is we, we want something so bad. You want to run all of those miles. You want to win. You want to do, you know what I mean? But then we create some kind of resistance sometimes if we need it to be just like this. So that's why what you said, break it down, right? Start with two miles, start with five miles, start with whatever it is. If you're working your business, right? Think about it. How many customers do you need for this? But be so obsessed with your goals, but become detached from the outcome because the, the, the attachment creates resistance. And that's where we get hung up. So true. And you know that's what? Right. It's so, so true. And it's so funny because, so I'm going to go into it in a minute, but it's, you know what it is. And it, it, you're all about it. It's the person you become is the end goal. You're not, you, you want this giant feat and that's great. And by becoming that person, you'll hit it. I, yep. you know, I, I smash goals as a byproduct of just becoming consistent, being the person, Yes. but it's funny because I went to Colorado to run my marathon and I had the goal of a 320. I now, I don't know if you're familiar with running. I bombed. So that means my hydration was not on point. Mm. I got destroyed by the altitude and the hills and I didn't train hills. I, I was on my, my fault. Obviously I didn't look into the, the course properly. Mm. Um, but I hit mile 18 and I hit a wall and mm. it was one of those where, I mean, I felt it earlier in the race too. I felt it at 13 and 14. I was like, this is going to be a grind. Um, then, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was at mile 13. I was on pace for like something crazy. I, I don't even know, like a 305, 310 marathon. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. And then just hill after hill. And I, it's funny. I started laughing at one point because I would come down and I would look up and there'd be another one. And I'm like, you have to be, uh. I know. And then I just kept telling myself, I was like, you know what? You're ready past the toughest hill. So just keep going at this point. I mean, what's, what's the harm? You went through the toughest one and that wasn't reality, but you know, sometimes you got to lie to yourself and trick yourself. Absolutely. So, yeah. So I finished and I, I look up and at first 
So we started 10 minutes behind the first, I guess you say heat. Mm-hmm. And I saw 336 and I was like, shit, I really missed my goal. And I was, I was pissed. So then I look and then finally it updated. And it was like 323. So I missed it by three minutes. But again, okay. that's, that's where you could get so attached to the goal with for a second, I'm a competitive person. Yep. Again, a marathon is something where you're only competing with yourself because no one's in your mind. And God knows the things I was saying in there. <laughs> I could just imagine. Oh my, it was a good place to be. And then it was a very bad place to be. <laughs> um, but you know, and you sit there and I'm sitting there and I'm like, I could be mad at this or I could be, I'm a kid that's living in New Jersey, just from 586 miles from my first real marathon prep. I PR'd my first marathon by an hour already. And I'm going to be mad that I missed it by three minutes when I've never ran in altitude. And I, I spoke to my running coach today and he was like, just so you know, if you ran that in Chicago, same day, same marathon, you would have ran like a 313. Absolutely. So I'm like, I'm going to be mad at myself. And the okay. scenery while I was going through it was absolutely beautiful. Oh, I'm sure, right? <laughs> it was insane. But it's it's so funny. And that also goes back to like, you said you're big on law of attraction. I think everything's connected. Like the fact that we're even having this conversation, I just went through that. And you're coming on speaking about how the goal isn't the end all be all. And it's it's all connected. Yeah. It really is really it's it so so is and that's that's awesome first of all congratulations to you because thank you i'm no runner like that's to me i mean i've lifted some heavy weights in, in my yeah. life but to run like that like that's that's awesome so kudos to you that. i mean look goals I, I always go through this you'll have someone tell you you know be attached to your goals and like run through the wall and get that goal blah, blah, blah. and then you'll have someone like abraham hicks is saying like detach yourself be calm be cool let the universe you know, create space for the universe to come in and do what it's supposed to be doing for you. And I meet myself in the middle, right? For, for me, I have goals. I'm going to crush them, but I will always celebrate the wins and the reason, and that's a win, right? Like think about that. Absolutely. You take everything into consideration where you are, the Hills, the weather, the, this, the traveling, like all kinds of stuff, but the, there's a huge win in there. First of all, most people are still sitting on the freaking couch, right. right? Like think about that. Like you're 27. Most people are not even close to the things that you are doing or that have accomplished and that you're going to accomplish. Right. So I always celebrate the small wins and we celebrate wins on elevate every single call. And it's funny. A lot of women are like, I don't really know. I didn't really do anything good. I'm like, what, what do you mean? You did something good every day. And if you think that you didn't, then be more intentional about making sure that you are doing something good towards your goals. And the reason why we celebrate the wins is because again, your frequency and your high vibration, nothing good happens when you feel like shit. Sorry, guys, I'm a, I'm, I'm a cursor. It's just the truth, right? I, the worst I always tell people don't even take action. Don't, if you're having a day, which you're human, you're going to curl up in a ball, do something that makes you feel happy. When I'm having a day, I put on music. For me, music just gets me. It's a vibration, right? That's what music is. I'll dance in my kitchen. Like I will have a fledge on concert. Like I'm not even kidding. Like dance moves and everything, right? I get myself in that high state and then I go towards the goal too, right? So there's a, there's a comp like middle ground. You have to, you have, you have to find ways to feel good every day. That should be everyone's goal every single day. Not just your money goal, not just your business goal. Your goal is to do things every day to make sure that you feel good, so that your vibrations are high, so that your frequency is set. So when opportunity comes to you, you're attracting it. You don't even have to go out and get it like not for nothing, but I attracted you. Yeah, no, I believe it. You know what I'm saying? Right? Like I watch your podcast. I'm like, oh, that would be cool. I would love to. And all of a sudden, boom, boom, slip in the DMs. I'm like, yes. Yeah. (laughs) But that's because you work on feeling good towards your goals every day, too. So absolutely. Yeah. It really is. It's so important. And I, you know, on this journey, so I feel like obviously we're all on, uh, Mm -hmm. I want to say like a spiritual awakening. I'm not the craziest spiritual person, but I'm I'm into it. And Mm -hmm. I think it's funny because when I first started, I was always a selfish person which in nature, obviously I'm not proud of it, but it is what it is, but I've changed what I'm selfish about. And I think that's the game changer. So my family sometimes will be like, Oh, we're going to be late. Cause he's got to work out. And I'm like, but you don't understand. I can't pour from an empty cup. If I don't do that and take my time to be selfish there, I'm not who I am. And yep. I like to think for the most part, I'm a very even keeled person and calm. So I think they respect that now and they understand it, but it, it's funny. Cause it does take a bit of selfishness to, to build that out of yourself. It does. Absolutely. I'm so happy that you brought this up because can I tell you the same thing? I'm the one going into the gym. I'm totally different than most people in my family, right? I've made it such a habit for me. I've been told so many times, you don't have to be in the gym for, for hours. No, you're right. I don't have to. It's where I want to be. Absolutely. It's where I want to be. And to be honest with you, it's where I became the person who I am today. The gym saved me so many times. I was a 
into all kinds of sports as, 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 as a kid, it kept me out of trouble. It kept me out of, it kept me right. Focus on the goal. Um, but same, same thing. You have to have a little bit of selfishness, but again, perspective, right? You're not going to be able to give to anybody. If you don't fill up your own cup, if you're a mom out there, if you're a dad out there, whatever it is, you're not gonna be able to give your kids exactly what you want to, because you're not giving it to yourself. So really, what are you teaching your kids? Right? Same thing with your team, same thing with your staff. If you're not showing them that it's important to take care of you and your needs and your mindset, whatnot, then how are you going to be able to lead them the way that you want them to be led? It's so true. And I, and I think even part of this journey is knowing the things that keep you grounded. And I think that's, that's learning it. So after the marathon, I, I don't want to say I was defeated because I really wasn't. I wasn't the proudest I could have been, which again, is something I need to work on. I'm very hard on myself, but for a good cause. Yeah. Um, but, and people will call me crazy. It's funny. I, I went to Colorado with my little sister after the marathon. I ate a ton of food. I kept it healthy just because I'm, I'm so locked in right now on what yeah. I want to do that. I'm like, it's not like I had some nachos and that was it. Yeah. Um, but my sister fell asleep on the couch. She didn't even run the marathon. So <laughs> she fell asleep on the couch. I went to the gym because I was like, I could hit light arms. I was like, I'm not going to go crazy if I don't feel it. I only did like 15 minutes, but I just want a little pump. They had a sauna. I sat in the sauna and I didn't post it because I don't want to hear everybody like, oh, you're going to get robbed though or whatever. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I don't even want to, it. but that's where I wanted to be. And I knew that that would, and it did. I sat there, listened to some music, got a really light pump, sat in the sauna. And I was like, no, this was today as a whole was just a win. And it's so true. Yeah. Yeah. You got to celebrate your wins. You have to fill your own cup and do what's best for you. There's so many times when sometimes I will, I will feel bad, you know, maybe I missed a party or I was late or I was this, or, you know, right now I'm in a very much of a grind season. I call it right. Um, I going to be 41 in December, which blows my mind, by the way, guys, time goes by real quick. And sometimes I'm like, really 41? Like when the hell did that happen? I don't feel it. I right. feel like I'm 21. I, I honestly do. I feel like th th there's no age. And here's the thing about age real quick. I'll just touch on this. I don't invite the old person in. I don't. You will never hear out of my mouth. Oh, I feel old. Oh, this. Oh, you. so many people have told me like, well, wait till you hit 43. Wait till, what do you mean? I, yeah. I don't need to wait. I, it's, I'm fine. Like right. I, my belief in my non-aging is so strong. It's like silly. So guys, don't, uh, don't invite the old person in. <laughs> Just to touch on that really quick. I think it's funny you say that because I'm 27 and I, my watch tells you like your fitness age and it says 18. And I, I live that way. And like, I tell Every single year that I get older, I'm going to say this is my prime year. Just yeah. because, again, why wouldn't you want to believe that? Right? Ab right? Absolutely. But yes, there's, there, there's times and right now I feel like I'm not spending maybe as much time with my friends or, you know, other people that I want to, but they have to understand. You know what I mean? I had to talk to my mom. I'm like, mom, you know me. I'm, I'm on the verge. It's all actually happening now. I've been working years, years up on this. And it's funny, right? I've been working on myself for years trying to figure things out, making shifts, this and this. But right now where I'm at, I feel like everything is aligning and falling into place. She knows my goals. They have to understand it. They have to understand it. You've got to, it's so important to put yourself first and what's good for you. And if you got a dream, you have a mission, don't let anybody limit you towards that. Don't sure. make, don't let them make you feel bad. You know what I mean? For, for anything. So you gotta, you gotta do things that fill your own cup. Absolutely. And the only way they can limit you is if you let it in. And then if you let right. it in your own head, it really is the reality. Absolutely. I know there's a great book. Um, I'm going to say it, the art of not giving fuck. It's amazing. If you haven't read it, read it. Feel free to curse. I don't know if you've seen any of my content. I, I, have, an mother. <laughs> I have an Italian mother. I'm not kidding. The F word is like the to me. And I, I try, I really do try. It's just, I feel like I sound better with it. I got to be honest. Like it's. No, can I tell you, I curse all the time. I'm Italian. I'm loud. Yeah. Sometimes obnoxious, but in a professional way, I right. promise sometimes too. It, it's um. what did I read? Uh, what, well, what was it? A genius curses too much. I've, I've seen that, right? yeah. But it, it brings the energy, right? Absolutely. It's aggressive. It's I'm getting people's attention. Like, and also too, I'm real. Yeah. I'm, I'm real. Like there, there was a time in my journey of all this and I'm on with you with the spiritual uh, awakening. I kind yeah. of awoken at probably 30 years old. I had a really shitty time in my life. Um, I'll share it with you guys. I got a DUI. I moved down to Belmar, didn't know anyone, didn't know any friends, nothing. And all of a sudden I have nowhere to go, no license, no anything. And that was really, I had a lot of time to myself. I had to figure some stuff out. Um, but all of those things are important to the journey of it all. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. yeah, no. And so you have to become your authentic self. One, at one point, I think I tried to be 
nicer or show up to like people please and everyone loves me. And as I'm getting older, this is me, man. This is me. Yeah. I love, I curse, right? I work hard. I play hard. Like you're going to get the authentic me. Yeah. So true. So I've similar boat, like 24, I kind of, I had this and I scratched the surface and then kind of reverted back to my old ways. And I want to say in the last like year, this has just excelled like tenfold. And I, I, it's month to month. I don't even recognize myself and I love it. I love every second of it. Right. And it's, it, it, sometimes you got to go through the shit to even to accomplish the, the moral wins and just become the person. Oh yeah, a absolutely. We talk about this on Elevate a lot, right? We, um, a lot of the things that we do or that we don't do all stem from our childhood, right? The shit that we've went through, uh, the old programming. So when you start to become aw awoken to this, you realize, wow, I've been doing this and this is the reason why, or I think like this, and this is probably the reason why, you know, and it's a lot of work, a lot of reprogramming of your mind when you're going through a journey like this and you dedicate yourself to self-development, right. To like really changing the person who, who you are, because you know that you want to become something better. It is hard work. This is why a lot of people stop after the first book. This is why a lot of people stop after their first uh, is session with like a counselor or something, because you have to dive deep. And this is emotional shit you have to go through to, to, to get it all up and release it, let it go. So you're able to take the next steps into the person who you're really supposed to be. So to anyone out there who is, you know, wanting to do this and wanting to learn more about yourself and wanting to start reading the books and getting on the podcast, I'm telling you right now, it's the best journey you will ever do ever. It's the best work that you'll ever put in, the best in, in, in investment that you can make if you hire a coach, right? The best, because you're going to reprogram your mind. You're going to eliminate things that no longer serve you and step into the human that God really intended you to be. But I'm going to tell you, it's fucking work. Absolutely. Work. Yeah, I've never cried so many times in the shower, at the gym. Ever, have you ever worked out so much? You got so emotionally attached to it. All of a sudden, you're just crying. I'm crying doing squats. Like, why am I crying? <laughs> I know what you mean. No, it really, it's the most rewarding thing. And it's funny it, because everything else just starts to click. And I always say it where like, you would think fitness has nothing to do with your mental health or your financial success. But if you are just in your, your power, really everything mm -hmm. clicks and it, it's, it's crazy. And I, I am an emotional person. So I was a police officer. I felt myself really hardening yeah. from a, a couple of serious situations. I worked in Jersey city, which obviously isn't some parts aren't the nicest area. Oh, yeah. And it's funny because like, I'll sit there and I remember parts of like my day where you would see craziness, like homicides and you're sitting in a hospital and you're just numb. And then I'll see now and like, I'm just driving on like a Sunday night and I'm sitting here and I'm like, wow. Like I like just even the simplest shit, like I'm leaving my sisters and just like, wow, my sister has a baby. Like, that's so cool. Or like, even yesterday morning, I was driving to the gym in Colorado. It's like, wow. Like, listen, I didn't hit the time I'm up. But like I ran a fucking marathon. Yeah. Like, I was like in Colorado, like what the fuck? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just sitting here. Like, you just, when you do, when you take it in, it's, it's, a, it's just different. You, you feel on a different level. It is. It's so, so, so different. Um, also to like entrepreneur life, right? To anyone who like wants to start their own business and stuff. It's quite a journey, man. And as you're saying this, right. And like, you kind of look back and you're like, wow, like I, I just did this or I'm yeah. just feel like more time freedom. Like for me, I wanted more time freedom. I used to work in the city. Um, I used to run high-end boutiques and shops and I worked a lot in my twenties, right? Because that's what I was programmed to do. I needed to take care of myself, right? At a young age, move out of my house. I just, I had to figure out things and make money. Um, and it's all good, but I realized I wanted my life to look differently. So now here I am like 13 years later or so. And I'm like, wow, like today I woke up at eight o'clock with no alarm. That right. was one of my dreams to wake up with no alarm clock. You know what I mean? Like my life looks very, very different. And I lean into gratitude because of it, because it used to be the rat race. It used to be waking up. I have to be here. I have to do here. I have to hop on this train, hop on a bus, hop. On. And I realized like, this is not my life. I'd rather take the road of risk <laughs> and Absolutely. be the entrepreneur and figure some stuff out on my own so that I could create, right? Create and be my own boss. But again, there's the work. And here's how I feel about entrepreneurship. And I'm, I always link it into the gym because the gym is, it saved me, like I said, in so many ways, right? And I, I really do wish that more people would take their health into consideration in all aspects, right? Like moving our body and whatnot. If you want your business to grow, move your body. <laughs> You're going to feel better, right? Like, so Absolutely. here's the thing. 
you're an entrepreneur. Everyone out there is an entrepreneur of your own body because your body is your business. And if you take care of your body, that's a reflection of what you do. So if you're a business owner, right, your body is a reflection. So however you take care of it, whatever your daily habits are, whatever it is, it's going to be a reflection in whether it's your business, how you maintain your relationships, your, your, your connection. So I'm always preaching about that, right? Like we're responsible for this meat suit right here. Absolutely. <laughs> Cause it's just a body. It's just a meat suit. I tell everybody your soul. <laughs> Sure. Well, you know, it's funny because you'll find, especially successful people, I feel like it's, you know, the clothes they wear matter, the car they drive matters. How about your own body? Yeah, it's crazy. And and you just settle in that area. Yep. And, and something I, I've always struggled with is like how people could be successful in one area of their life and not want to strive to be better in other areas. It's always yep. bothered me because I'm like, you know, somebody will have such financial success. And again, it's not easy to balance at all. I'm not saying that by any means, but you have such financial success. Meanwhile, you're out of shape and have an awful relationship with your family. I'm just like, you're not happy. Like why you're settling. Like it doesn't matter how much money you have. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, that just goes to show too, like money doesn't really bring happiness. Money just brings more options, right? To be happy, but you're absolutely right. And it's like, why is it that some people can take extreme care of their body, like over the top, you know what I mean? And then fail to prioritize other things too, or other dreams or other, it really stems back from belief. It really stems oh. back from your belief. Um, when I got into fitness and like you know, training and whatnot, um, and my, my, one of my stories, I should say, right. Like my first transformation was my body, right. I, when I was younger, I was an athlete. I was a great athlete, but I was always overweight a little bit. So I had lost weight in my twenties. I kind of got, got it together, but I did not change my mindset. So when life got hard, what happened? That was my vice. Boom, you eat your emotions, right. You stuff, whatever it is that you don't want to feel, um, and that's what really kind of led me into also like self-development. Like I knew that there was a problem. There was something there. I lost the weight. I did that. So you can put this into anything, whether it's losing the weight or maybe it was making a whole bunch of money and then you lost it. Why? You didn't believe that you can keep it. You lost a whole bunch of weight and then you gained it back. Why? You didn't believe that you can keep it. You have this great relationship and you're so in love and everything's great and everything's going well, but somewhere down the road, you're like, mom, maybe this isn't for me. And you sabotage her. And you're like, why did I do that? Because you don't believe you can actually have a great relationship. You know, you're worthy of it. Right. So again, it goes back to like changing the thermostat, right? Like so true. focusing on who you are and what you want to be and who you want to become and changing your mindset. It literally controls everything, your money, your body. And when you start to understand that you are a soul, you are a soul in a, in a, in a, in a human body right? Having an experience, having a human experience, it'll changes the game. Absolutely. You step out of the matrix, really. Yeah. And people, people get stuck in this rat race. And it, it's funny because even, so obviously I'm in this space, so I do a ton of self-reflecting. So even just hearing you say that, I'm like, wow, I just ran a marathon. The old me would have, um, I love dessert. Like I would have inhaled the cake or just all the cookies that were in Colorado, I probably would have ate yesterday. Like yeah. that's just how I do things. How I do anything is how I do everything to the mm -hmm. extreme. And the fact that I had nachos and then ordered like sweet greens and had like a salad for dinner. I'm like sitting here. I'm like, that just shows that's gro that's growth in itself. And it, it's again, it's a small wind. You're so right. Ab absolutely. So I also run a, uh, a meal prep company and I make these little peanut butter things, protein ball kind of things. And I make them. And I remember when I first started to make them, I was like, I really don't want to make them. Then I have to have the peanut butter in my house and then, you right. know, whatever, blah, blah. And it's so funny that you're saying this because I just called my friend, right. Who also helps me shoot programs for me and whatnot. And I'm like, girl, there's peanut butter in my house for months. There's cereal. There's it. I don't even touch it. I don't yeah. even go towards it. I notice the difference is in my habits and who I am. Like, I don't need that anymore. I don't right. need to have the drink every night. I don't need to have the wine. I'm so fulfilled with who I am and who I surround myself with and what I'm doing that all my little vices, all my little bad habits that I had to have because that made me feel something is now filled with true self-love that I have for myself. You, you know what it was too, it was comfort. And you're so used to now making yourself uncomfortable. My mom made cookies the day that I was leaving for the marathon and they were just sitting out, like left yeah. them out. I was like, did she do this on purpose? Like she made those, it was those little like Halloween cookies with like the little pumpkin on them. And I, I could eat, when I tell you what I could really eat, it's scary. Yeah. I'm like 10,000 calorie challenge is like, it's like a cake. <laughs> so easy. But so she left them out. And like, I'm sitting here, I'm like, wow. Like, I actually like the fact that they're out because like, I'm not even close. Like, I'm not even tempted in the slightest. And it's, it really is. It's the yes. weirdest little form of growth, but it's the yes. little things you notice when you do the self inventory. Yep. It's the little bit of the, and you have to celebrate those wins. I mean, at one point, I had a shopping problem. 
I mean, I shopped. It doesn't matter what I shopped for. I just wanted something every single day. I'm like, right. what am I doing? But I noticed this is filling a void because I'm feeling lack in somewhere else in my life, right? Whether that be love, relationship, whatever it is, money, because now here I am spending all my money because why? Do I not think that I can keep it? Right. right? I think right away, my money paradigm at one point was so poor that I knew I could make the money. I knew I could make the sale. I knew I can do it, but I never thought that I could actually keep it. I was always going to be poor because that's what I saw. I saw cars being repoed. I saw things happening. I saw, we moved so many times when I was younger. We just, I wasn't going to have the money. And now I'm obsessed with checking my savings account. I'm like, oh, good. We're right there. Oh, good. We're over this number. Like, I'm obsessed with it. Right. I still shop sometimes, not going to lie, <laughs> right. but now it's because I make enough, right. And I earn enough and I work on myself enough to buy that and not have to stress about it. Right. 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 It feels, it feels differently, but that's yes. All the wins like that. That's all, that's all growth. That's all work. Absolutely. And I, and I think in everything is like that balance. So it's like, obviously, you know, you should still shop and enjoy yourself. And, and so being 27, like I, I find that weird, like that weird middle ground where like, so for today, for example, it's my buddy's birthday. So I text him, I was like, let me know what you do this weekend. And part of me is like, I really like, let's just do dinner. Like I, in my head, I'm like, let's just go to dinner. I do I have zero interest in drinking alcohol. I, I, I flip the switch. Listen, I'll have a drink or two. Like I'll go away. I don't know. I don't like it. I, cause I know it's a vice for me. And in the form of, it makes it easier to have conversation, which now I have no issue doing. So I, why do I still need it? You know, I, I feel I don't. So I, but again, it's, you can't just avoid every situation where it comes to going out. So it really is that middle ground. Like, how do you navigate that? And especially you, you know, in a similar boat, you said you're, you're having trouble with friendships or relationships right now where people are respecting that boundary, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough thing because you want to keep those connections. Yeah. Yeah. And here's, here's the thing. I think you really have to be self self self-aware. I feel like it's a trendy word, right? But it's the truth. You have to be self-aware and you have to um, admit to yourself when this is the time, for example, if I'm feeling anxious, right. Or I'm feeling whatever it is I'm feeling because we're human and I can meditate every single day, but one day I might wake up and feel a little bit of, ah, right. Uh, maybe that's not the day where I do go out to eat or I do have a drink because it might lead to the wrong path, right? Maybe this is like, whatever that is, you have to be self-aware and be able to decide and put yourself first. Hey guys, I know I said I was going to go out, but I'm really not feeling it tonight. Oh, come on. You have to come out. Yeah, I know. I'm really not. I'm really into it. You have to be able to say no and, and not be worried if someone's going to be mad at you or somebody, you know, offended or whatever else. There are certain times when I'm like, you know what, Bianca, just go do do your thing. And I'm totally fine. I have total self-control, no big deal. It's all good. And then there's other days where sometimes I have to check myself. It's not a good idea if I go and do this. And if you were a true friend and you were, you know, whatever it is, you're true to me, you're going to just understand, right? I've just passed. I mean, past couple of weeks over the weekend, my friends are like, Oh, let's go pumpkin picking. Let's go this. And I'm like, dude, I picked up like two more clients. I can't like, I have to sit still and do some work. You know what I mean? So your dreams have to be bigger. You have to be self-aware and you really have to start practicing saying no, yes. saying no to other people and saying yes to what you know is good for your soul. Right. Think about how many times you do something and you're out, you're doing whatever it is. And you're like, I shouldn't be here right now. And then right. something bad happens. You're like, damn it. I don't even want to be here. Why did this happen? Like, think about that. Your gut, your gut, your instinct, your intuition, when that talks to you, that's how God speaks to you. That's how, and I don't know, I mean, not, not to bring out like, you know, God, but I am going to bring it out because yeah, <laughs> higher power, God, like he's talking to you and he's trying to tell you something, trying to guide you. So when you go, when you go against what you're naturally feeling inside that you should or shouldn't do, what do you think is going to happen? Probably bad. Yeah. bad stuff. <laughs> so, so don't do that. <laughs> I just, I just saw a post on this too. And it was like, nowhere to draw your line in the sand. And I think that that hits this directly where it's like, you have to have that personal boundary where you know either you can allow yourself to enjoy yourself, but at the same time, it's like, you need to know when to cut it off. Yeah, yeah, there's, believe me, there's plenty of times when I could be around and whatever it is, you know what I mean? Like fruit yeah. or whatever, alcohol, it's all normal stuff that everyone goes through. It's just that becoming self-aware and knowing who you are and being attached to your why and right. your goals. If you have, if you're waking up with no goals, you got no plan, you got no direction, that's it. Like, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? Right. But what are you really doing in life, right? You've got to find a purpose. You've got to have a plan, plan towards your purpose. So true. Yeah. So this, is, again, this is a big me question. And I love it. I'm having fun. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel this one's like one where like, I mean, my, my buddy might have to even edit this one out. Just kidding. But <laughs> you know, so something I struggle with is like, 
relationships for right now. And, and you're in a similar boat where you're on this self-growth journey. Everyone's on their own journey. Everyone's on their own level and wavelength. And I don't think any two are the same. I don't think they're supposed to be. But how do you find it? So obviously you mentioned being in a relationship. How do you find it? Do you feel that you're like, and I'm not saying me personally, this always happens, but like sometimes I feel like you could be like the teacher or the student. And it's so tough to kind of find that compromise or middle ground. And again, it might not be the reality. It could be your perception on it. But like, how do you navigate that? Again, I don't know your partner if he's on a similar wavelength or or not, but how do you personally navigate that if you don't mind? Compassion. Yeah. If I could sum it up into one word, you have to have compassion with what everything that you do and say. So it's funny with, with some people in my life right now, right? And, and with him, there's a balance there. I think that we both learn from each other, right? And I think that we both teach e- each other. Um, I think that I've had maybe more experience, not just in that relationship, but in any relationship with my friends. And, and that to me means that I need to find more people, right? To help right. elevate me too. But no matter where anyone is in the journey, I think it's a matter of having compassion towards that person, no matter what it is. Um, and it's, it's the ability to communicate and to work with them, right? I heard this one guy, I forgot what kind of podcast it was, but he said that him and his wife, if they get into some kind of like an argument or something like that, he always thinks he's right. And, and that's most of the time why we argue about anything is that we think that we're right. Right. right? So I might think to myself, like, I've studied this. I've read the books. Like, I know I'm right. Like, I'm on, I'm on a higher level, man. You know what I mean? And you have to come up to my level, blah, whatever, whatever it is. But he said that him and his wife, they always go like this. This is it, right? And this means you're right about that. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. And have, and have compassion for that person where you must be the teacher and have the ability to teach, right? And not to demand not to have power over anybody, but if you really want to make an impact on people, whether it's your significant other or not, you want to be able to be open to the communication and never make someone feel silly for not knowing certain stuff. Everyone has a different perception, right? And everyone's going to learn differently too. Also too, as a, as a teacher, as a coach, become teachable and coachable. And I'll admit that's something that sometimes I struggle with because I'm a Capricorn and I think that I'm always right. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. I know that sometimes I have to be, I have to get humble, right? Because he will teach me something and I'm like, no. And I'm like thinking to myself, damn it. Yeah. You're, you're fucking right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I heard you. Yeah, you're right. And then here I am like, thank you for explaining it to me like that. <laughs> you have to kind of take it down a lot. So I think it's got to be a balance of being a teacher, being able to communicate and also being coachable and understanding that you don't always know everything and someone else's perspective, whether, the, whether they read the books or not, or whatever, it might be super insightful. It's true. Right. Become a good listener. Right. We uh, talked about this um, to uh, one of my coaching, one of my clients, I think it was yesterday. And I said, what's your superpower? And she said, I listen. I think I'm a really good listener. So I said, well, that's one thing that we want to put out there more is a reason why you want to coach with me is because I listen. Right. But everyone needs to do a little bit more of that. So, so that's true. what I would say. But if I was to sum it up in, in a word, be compassionate because if you find yourself that you're more of the teacher, maybe you're on your journey, maybe you're, you're a little bit, right. You, you, you know it. Then if you are the one who is awakened, God would want you to teach it. Right. And I think to myself all the time, this is going to be funny, but every time I think about doing anything or I'm mad or this and that, I think, what would Jesus do? Yeah. And I, and it's more of like a biblical thing, but like, let's face it, like, right. Jesus woke up and made Peter eggs right after Peter crossed him terribly. And he still did the right thing. And he still made it a point to say, it's okay. And I want to teach you the right way. So maybe a little bit deep, but that's no, absolutely. <laughs> that even that comes back to the law of attraction. Cause it's like, yeah, you put good out and good's going to come back regardless of what was done to you. It, it really yeah. isn't, isn't the, uh, the end all be all. Yeah. Right. So yeah, just be, be a compassionate person and find that balance. And at the end of the day, let it go. You're right yeah. about that. Great. <laughs> Love that. Let's, uh, let's hop into some of these questions. I feel like yeah. we, we kind of hit everything that we, we plan on talking about yeah, without even trying. I know. Um, but yeah, okay. So the one question, and I know you were uh, a fan of this one. If you were about to get on a spaceship and leave Earth, what's one uh, message you would leave everybody with? Yeah, this was a great, great question. So number one, if I'm coming back to Earth, can you please be nicer people? Because I feel like our energy of having less peace is destroying Earth. We all need to get our shit together. We all need to be nicer people. We all need to start putting the weights back on the weight racks and put your shopping carts back in the fucking shopping cart place where it's supposed to be. That's a, honestly, it's a big pet peeve of mine. 
if you want to start changing your life, do that. <laughs> but my point is, right? Like take care of the earth that we have. But if I was to leave and leave and say one thing, it's stop letting fear stop you from what you want to do. Because the, I said this earlier, the fear is going to be there. You need to accept it. Think about what you want to do right now. If, I'm, if anyone's listening out there and you have a dream, right? And you talk yourself out of it. There's too many people doing it right? How am I going to make a change? I don't have the money to start the business. Or I don't have this or whatever the dream that it is that you have. You're the one that is limiting yourself because you're allowing fear to stop you. But if you just fought through the fear and actually showed up the way that God intends you to do, here's the thing. If you had an idea of doing something, it's because you're actually capable of doing it. You're actually capable of doing it. Think about how many ideas you have. Oh, that would be good. Oh, maybe I can do that. And then right away you're talk yourself right out of it. But if you had the idea, it's because it was intended for you to do it. It was meant for you. I never think about being an opera singer because I'm not supposed to be, it's not in my right. But I always thought about this. I always thought about talking. I was like, so you got to do the work and get yourself there to understand, to fight the fear. But I'm 40, like I said, and stepping into it. So it doesn't matter what age you are, right? Start it. It doesn't matter what age you are. I have to stress that. But if you're in your twenties, this and that, and you're thinking about doing something, fucking do it. Stop letting fear stop you. You have one life, one life. That's it. This is, this is your Super Bowl. There's no rehearsal, right? Les Brown talks about that. There's no dress rehearsal to this. That's it. And every day that goes by, it's one more day closer to the day that you're not going to be here. So what are you going to do with your days? You got to so stop. True. Yeah. You got to stop letting fear get to you. And Ed my life talks about this. And it's funny because when I heard him talk about it, I was screaming on the top of my lungs because I've had this thought already. I promise you, <laughs> but I was like, Oh my God, me and Ed, Ed think the same but when, you, when you're done. Right. And my belief is you're going to go to heaven. You're going to talk. Oh, I love this. You know it, right? Like he's going to ask you, I gave you all these gifts. I gave you these abilities, whatever. Why didn't you do it? Why didn't you take advantage? I would feel terrible. Yeah. You're right. God, you gave me a voice. You gave me a mouth. You gave me the confidence. You gave me all the skills, but I was too afraid to do it because I didn't believe in you enough. So true. David so, Goggins is the same thing. It's like, you're right? going to, to, you're going to get there. And he says that you're going to meet someone that you could have been. He's like, are you going to be that person's twin? Or are you going to be the complete opposite? It's so, exactly. so true. Exactly. And that right there scares the shit out of me. Yeah. That scares me to the point where I hop on this podcast, right? Yeah. I go and I talk to strangers. I go and I make sense, whatever it is, whatever it is I have to do, because I'm not really doing it just for me, I'm doing it to make an impact, but my creator made me a certain way and I want to respect him. And I want to show him that I am what you made me of. Absolutely. Well, it's, it's not setting limits and it's, it's so many people leave potential on the table. And I talked about this in my last episode. It's crazy. Like I know so many people that are way more talented runners, lifters, whatever, but none of them have done a bodybuilding show. None of them have ran a marathon. It's like, why? Who cares? Yeah. Because that's not what everybody else is doing. Who cares? It's, it's also funny. I just had this conversation with my sister because I'm sure people see my post, your post. It's like, oh my God, they're always in the gym or they're always, he's always running. And it's like, you should see my feed because that's all I see. That's yeah. all I see. Yeah. So to me, I ran that marathon, a kid finished a 30 mile run, a kid finished a hundred mile run. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, wow, I did the least today. Like, again, not to compare, but you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. just funny. Absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, 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 is. it is. It's so, so crazy. So many people do leave their, their, their dreams on the table. One of the best things that I think um, I ever could have done. So my mom owns a, a children's entertainment company, right? But sometimes she'll do like parties for like adults and stuff like that. And there was a retirement home that she did. And I forgot what she was hired for to do, but anyway, I had to go there and I had to help her set up some stuff, whatever. So these are people who are older and they might be sick. They might be on their way out, whatever else, but talking to them. Oh, and I'm a talker. Like, I just, I like to ask questions. I thought to myself, like, wow, I'm around everyone who's like 80 and above. Like, what did you do with your life? You know, like, what, like, what did you do? And the stories that we heard and what they used to do and they were in world war II and they were like, it was just mind blowing. And I thought to myself, like, wow, like they have a whole lifetime and they told me things that they wish that they would have done. Right. Yep. I should have done this. I should, a lot of them. It was like a try this before I was even in this like or, arena, but right. back then I remember thinking like, wow, like a lot of dreams die. Right. A lot of dreams just go unfulfilled because of fear. So true. It, and it's so, it's so sad. So you have a dream out there or whatever it is that you want to do, you know, like sometimes, I mean, I'll, 
use uh, losing weight as an example, because it's scary, right? You gotta, you know, what you have to do, you can't focus on what you have to give up. You have to focus about the gains, what you're going to get out of it, right? You're going to make some sacrifices. Yeah, sure. Go to the gym, whatever. Yeah. You're not gonna eat the cookies, but why are you so scared of it? Because you might be something right. that you really want to be right. And you're sure. afraid of that. You lose people when you start changing. You lose people when you lose weight. You lose people when you are on your spiritual journey. All of a sudden, your friends think you're weird. Yep. If you start a company, you start network marketing, you, oh my God, you're crazy doing one of those things. Like it's, re- and then we stop because we're afraid. We're in fear. Yeah. I mean, why? I mean. Yeah. yeah I have a okay. podcast. Like it's, it's crazy. It really is. It's, it's funny too. And because you, you hit it on the head where it's, it's sacrifice, but it's funny because if you don't do it, you're sacrificing your health. You're sacrificing all the, you're sacrificing your goals, your dreams. And yeah. it's it, people rather lean into the comfort where obviously we're on the complete opposite end of the spectrum where I love, I love being different. And it's, it started in the weirdest ways for me. So when I was a police officer during COVID, they would drop off pizza or cookies to our district and never had any of it. Everybody like in the beginning was always this thing where it's like, Oh, just have some, have some. And then they stopped asking. But I, I, some days, like, not that it was like, a, well, I used to do like cheat days and stuff where I would have allowed myself to have it. But I was like, now it's just principle. Like now I can't, I like being different. I can't have it. And like, it's the weird things like that, but it's, it really is it's all the self-reflecting. Yeah, it is. And you got to do with whatever works for you. You know what I mean? Like whatever yeah. it is, but yeah, like it's, it's, um, yeah, man, just stop being so afraid. Stop being so afraid. I could go back into my twenties and think to myself, all the things I should have done back then that I didn't do because I didn't know any better because I was afraid. Um, back when I was working in, uh, the beauty industry, because that's what I used to do run, uh, apothecaries and stuff. Um, very often did people come in from like Vogue magazine and this and that I was an extra on the TLC reality TV show, like a lot of stuff. This is before like the iPhone guys. Right. So this is like, I'm like freaking dating myself here. (laughs) (laughs) I was asked to, uh, be an extra on this film, whatever it was, all this stuff. And I said no to it. I said no, but because I didn't think I was fit enough, I didn't think I was pretty enough. I didn't think, but they approached me. So like, I always go back to that. Why did I say no? Because I wasn't the confident person that I am today. And it's fine. Everything happens for a reason. But man, if I can go back there and tell that Bianca, girl, get your shit together. They want you to be on TV. What's wrong with you? Go and do it. Yeah. <laughs> but I was too scared. Right? So, like, like you said, so, we all have our journey. We all have our journey. Yeah. And it, the fear thing is, it, it's, I don't know why this has always popped in my head. I always think of the Wright brothers. Cause I'm like, like we have these goals of like, you know, for me, a lot of it's physical goals uh, because it just translates into other areas for me. And, but I, I look at those things where it's like, Oh, I want to do an Ironman. I want to do a hundred mile ultra run. And then I look at like the Wright brothers wanted to fly an airplane. People must have thought they were out of their fucking mind. Like yeah. even the thought, like it's crazy. And like you said, if you could create in your head, you could create in reality. Absolutely. There's so many people too. And I'm going to, I'm going to um, talk about this real quick. This is because age, I think age stops people. I yeah. think people are like, I know some of my friends right now are counting down the years to like retirement. And I'm like, are you, are you kidding me? I'm just getting started. Like, I can't right. even think about that. Right. There's a person, um, Jimmy Smith. He was in my network marketing company years ago. Uh, he started a network marketing at 64 years old. He was a butcher. He had six kids. Right. But he had a vision. And he was all about law of attraction and everything else. He was in network marketing for almost 10 years. He found the company that he's with now when he was like 72, maybe 74, something like that. And now he's worth about over $80 million from 70 something years old. to he's like 96 now or something like that. And he still has his wits. He still talks in front of people. It's insane. It really is. When most people are like, you know, getting ready to like kick the bucket, he's over there planning on how to make millions. And now his, he left such a legacy for people. So don't let age stop you. The creator of Walmart, I'm going blank on his name right now, but I remember this. He was 41 when he started it. KFC, I think he was in his 60s. It's Same. The same and he went and like knocked on everyone's door, right? I know that 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 story too is mind-blowing. So don't stop being afraid. You know, what it comes, you know what it comes down to is that they don't have the strong why. They don't have the passion. A lot of people are working a nine to five to get through the day, to get to Friday to get to vacation. And it's, it's a sad, sad reality. And listen, I get it. Not everybody could be an entrepreneur. Not everybody wants to be, Mm -hmm. but you need to find what, what makes you tick. So, and it's, it's funny. I feel like I've been talking about this often, but my older sister, for example, love her to death, but, and not in the nicest way. She's very basic as far as white picket fence, wanted to get married, beautiful wedding, has all of it, wanted a baby. I always looked at that as like, I don't want to say for lack of a better term, like a form of like a cop-out 
seeing her with that child has completely changed. It's insane because this is I'm like this is exactly what she was meant for. Right. Like it's it's right. really really cool. Yeah. It, it doesn't have to be a million dollars. It doesn't have to be a Lamborghini. It doesn't have to be a six pack. Like it just it just but find what makes you tick. And I feel like a lot of people don't even do that. No, and no, no, not at all. We don't lean into gratitude either. We don't lean into happiness, right? right? I used to be one of those people, can't wait till Friday, can't wait till this, can't wait till that. And now I wake up every day like it's Friday. I forget what day it is. Yeah. You know, but yeah. the thing is, even if you have a nine to five and that's where you're at and that's what you want to do and you're happy with that, like that's great. Absolutely. But get, make yourself like, get into the habits of being happy all of the time. You know what I mean? Like don't right. just live for the Friday. Don't just live for the, if you could pretend like every day is a Friday, right? And every day is good. Like, and if you want changes, here's another thing too. If you want to see changes, maybe you're not happy in the job that you're at and you want another job, or maybe you want to start your own business or whatever it is. If you want anything to change, if you go out and you apply for jobs or anything else, right? You're looking for opportunity or whatever it is, you're trying to attract it. You need to be grateful for where you are right now and in every moment, right? So if you're out there, you want to lose weight, you better thank your body for working and looking the way that it is right now. Right. If you're walking, you're talking, you got hands, you're moving your body. You better thank, kiss your body all the time. Give it so much love. And then you'll be able to release some of the weight. Right. If you want a new job, you better thank the desk that you have. Be appreciative towards your boss. Be appreciative towards everything else. Show ridiculous gratitude. And then things open up and the universe says, oh, you're happy where you are right now. Well, then we have to make you more happy because that's the vibration that you're on. So you attract more things to be happy about. But if you're one of those people that it's like, right. Ah, it's Friday. Oh, it's another Monday. Oh, I always get on my, on my story on like a Monday and just remind everybody, like, if you're that person, maybe it's time to change to become that other person that you're supposed to be. <laughs> True. And, and it doesn't even have to be the most ridiculous changes. Like something no. I found towards the end of marathon prep once a week, I would just go run like somewhere cool. Most of the time it was in New York city. I'm like, why not? It's a Thursday morning. I don't care. Whatever. Yeah. You know, I'll answer my calls right after I'm done. Like it is what it is. And it's, it's mm-hmm. finding the little happiness. It's so, so true. Yep. Absolutely. And so lastly, we got to end it with the, uh, the key question. So what keeps you going? Ha, huh, God. Yeah. God. I'm very attached to my faith. I'm very attached to knowing that there is a higher power out there and that we're being completely guided. Um, and he gave me a mission. I feel like he gave me a, he gave me a, a mission. He gave me a mouth. I understand how to communicate. I want to connect with people. Right. And I, I want to make him proud it proud, the higher power proud, but it does keep me going. You know, it's the, it's the feeling that I have when I make an impact on just one person. If one person tells me, Bianca, thank you so much for showing up on your story today. Thank you. But then my mission's complete for that day. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's, that's really what keeps me going is like, I just feel like I can run through a wall right now. I feel yeah. like it's hitting me, right? You got all these talents, you got all these ideas, you got all this stuff. When you really start to like pay attention to the synchronicities and how it all kind of starts to come together, it's not just me, it's not just you. There's something else out there. And if we learn to tap into that, that's what keeps me going. I'm I'm excited. I can't wait to see what God's gonna bring me next. I can't wait to see what other podcasts I'm be on or this or that, right? That's what keeps me going. The excitement of it, the excitement of the impact that I know I'm gonna make. But my faith, you're definitely. You're definitely helping and inspiring people. And I, I seriously, I appreciate it. I really, really do. Yeah, I appreciate it. Same, same to you, buddy. You're doing great. I watch Thank all you. your stories, all your reels, all your podcasts, even the running, the lifting. You're in the gym just like me all the time. And I love it. Try it. Right? Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, too. Love you. See ya. Yeah.